So the key to this site modeling is data, is getting the data in the best possible format, if at all possible. Yes. So I'm going to show you a, different, a few different methods. What do you normally get from a surveyor if they give you a site survey? A DWG file? DWG file with um, contours? Just, the, just 2D contours, that's it. And they're always 2D? Yes, I've never gotten a 3D. Right, I think what you need to do though, if in an ideal world, always ask your contractor, your surveyor, to give you the 3D data. Because if you think, you know, they always survey in 3D these days, unless they're doing it by hand, they're doing it with sort of lasers and machines, you know. Right. So they're doing it in 3D. But if you can't get it in 3D, I'll, sh I'll start off showing you what to do if you can't, okay? Sure. So let's go for the worst case scenario, is I've got to kind of use my polygon tool potentially um, oh. to trace over some existing contours on the site. Right. Okay, and I'm just going to just generate a bunch of these. Right. I won't do too many, but you'll get the idea. Yeah, I don't know. That'll do, I think. We can. All right, and then let's borrow a few of those up there and mirror them around. Okay, so we've got some flat sort of 2D shapes. Right. So what we can now do is turn them into 3D polygons. I, I could have drawn them with that tool, but it's easier to draw them with the 2D one because otherwise the 3D one snaps sometimes up and down. Right. So we do convert to 3D polys. Okay. Now when we do that, it normally groups them, that's not mm -hmm. a problem, we can just ungroup them. Mm -hmm. So now basically each contour has, you can see it in object, it has a Z height. Okay. Um, so let, I this Z height. Yeah. So let, let's just say, let's say each step is uh, 250 mil. Each um, of them. So that one is going to be 500. I'm just trying to do it in sequence. That one's going to be 750, yeah. and that one's going to be a meter, 1m, and that one's going to be 1250, and so on. Yeah? Okay. Let's save a bit of time. Let's cheat a bit. Let's just grab these, and do that, and then move those up to 50. So we've got, we've got a can you see that? We've got a sort of little slope generated with these 3D contours. I think what I really want to do is select them and go to Terrain, Site Model from Source Data. Okay. So this is, this is always where you start to create the site model. <laughs> it's just that you've got to get the data in the first place. So you've either got to get it from the surveyor or you've got to create it really. Right. So site model from source data. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So now we now we get the beginning of the right dialogue. Right. Um, under general, it, it shows you the maximum elevation and the minimum elevation. That's you know where we started and where we finished. We can see the. Let's put the minor contour contours out. Let's start with two fifty. Yeah. I'll click OK. And here we go. Wow. Not bad. So you get a 2D and a 3D site plan. Let's put those contours out a bit less. So let's go for 50. So now you should see a lot more contours. Can you see both in 3D and 2D? All right. This just smooths it out a little bit, really, doesn't it? Right. So you know, the, the smaller the contour, yeah, the, the more. The more you get. That's cool. It's cool, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at a couple of other things. Um, over here in 2D display, if you want to show the drainage on the site, you can show flow arrows. And the flow, right. the flow arrows are quite useful because they, they show where the water's going to drain, you know. Right. 
Um, these are the different options. There's, there's a whole bunch of them. So if you do coloured slopes, um, what it does, it gives you grade. It gives you different gradients for different intensities of slope. Right. So there's all sorts of stuff you can do. I quite mm. like I quite like this one, the extruded contours. The old-fashioned sort of white card architect's model. Do you remember from? Yes, 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 yes. That's how we used to be our models. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> lots of lots of bits of card layered up. That's so, right. so that is actually quite cool. Um, yeah, all right. Let's just keep it on the mesh one. And smoothing or not smoothing is pretty obvious there. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let's put a building on this thing. Yeah. So this is a kind of tool that you can use to very quickly generate some little 3D studies. It's based on the polyline tool. Um, and let me just kind of go and draw a bit of a building out here. So let's do four meters. Let's go six meters. I kind of wish I'd bent my sight a bit bigger now. And um, let's do five meters. Okay, that will do for now. So let's have a look. What does the massing model tool do? I drew, I drew just a simple shape, right. and what it does, it you know, it gives me a building that I can have any height and any number of floors. Wow! So it's actually, it's actually pretty good if you just want to kind of block model something. Yeah. And you can put a little pitch roof on. Wow! Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Really, really fast. That's excellent. Man. Let me show you a couple of other things. Um, all right, so I'll move that one over there in a minute because we might want to come back to that. You can actually—you wouldn't have thought you could do this—but you can add surface. Mm -hmm. yeah, My goodness! Man. You can reshape. Let's, let's, let's take it down a bit. So I don't like the height. Let's go for five meters. Wow. And let's go two stories. So it's really, really adaptable. It's really great for massing modeling in. If you're doing like um, that's, know, that's, that's really cool. a new hotel with a bunch of sort of condos or something like that, then that might be perfect for you. Yes. Remember that you can use Q, the clip tool. Right. And with that tool, not only can you rub out, remember, Everybody knows that one, but not everybody remembers that you can hold down the Alt key and you can add. So you know, you, it's like adding surface essentially. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty cool actually. I quite like that. That's so, really good, man. That's really fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, let me let me make this building a little bit smaller. If I chop it there, I reckon that will just about fit on our sides. Okay. So I know the site's a little bit small for this building, but let, let's just sort of put it on there for now. Okay. So now what we can do, Jermaine, is we can start to look at modifying the sides. Right. Okay, and there's a few different things called site modifiers. And the good thing is, the massing model is actually one of the simpler site modifiers. Uh -huh. So, if I just scroll down in object info, can you see use site modifier? Right. We check that one. Uh -huh. And then there's a concept here called grade limit. Now what the grade limit is, is how far away from the uh, building, or should we say the, the modifier, can you alter the site? So, you know, you want to give it a little bit of breathing space, a couple of meters or something like that. Right. Um, so you see this blue, blue line here? Right. That is my grade limit at the moment. So what, what that's saying is, outside of this, the grade limit, you cannot touch the site, you won't be altering it at all. Right, right. Inside, you're allowed to do what you need to do to get the slope angle correct. Okay. All right, so watch this then. 
We've got the site. At the moment, mm. I'm looking at the existing site. Right. So that isn't really going to be affected by site modifiers. That's just what we had before. Uh -huh. But if I go and change it to proposed, from existing to proposed, watch the contours. Wow, something's going on. Okay. Same okay. on the, the same on the 3D side. We go not existing but proposed. Okay. And suddenly we're, okay. contour, we're contouring our site. All right. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. What you can now do is click update the cut and fill. And no surprise there, there's going to be a lot of cut and not much fill. <laughs> Can you see? Yes, yes, yes. It, often what you'll then start to do is say, well, that, that's a silly place to put the building. You know, let's, let's move yes. it up by a meter and see what effect that has. So, come on, Dan. Let's, let's do 1,500, actually. Maybe a bit less. Okay, so look, we're half in, half out. So when I click on the site model and update, that's pretty nice. It's it's now contoured. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And with a bit of luck, we click update, cut and fill it, it will start to get near and more of a balance. Actually, we're not far off now. Right. So we're cutting a bit more than we're filling. Yes. So that means... What does that mean? It means we want to move it up a bit more, probably. Let's go up another 200. It's a great design tool, isn't it? You can keep changing it. Tell me about it. That's a great design tool. You know, normally cut and fill calcs, engineers charge a fortune for this kind of thing. Right. So, so actually, I've gone too far now. Now I've got more fill than cut. <laughs> so I can see I want to go down 100. It's amazing how much 100 mil of difference will make. Yes. Yay, look at that. 22 cut and 20 fill. So we're pretty balanced out now. Oh, so you, yes. don't, you don't have to take a load of material away or to the site. So that's going to make the build a lot more cost effective, isn't it? Yes, very much so. Awesome. The massing model tool, I love it, to be honest. It's so easy to use. Um, wow. You know, well, that's, something, that's something I will be using. I think you'll be using this. Um, Trust me. Definitely. I'm excited to go and use it already from what you, what you just did. So I'm just changing it to a single story building. Uh, right. Three meters and single story so it sort of fits a bit more appropriately on the side. One little tip is if you put the matting model in its own layer, no, use the matting model. Copy it back in, but turn off the pitch uh, roof. Give it a height of like 100 mil. So now it's actually just really nothing but slab. So, right. so it's almost like the slab that you build off. That's right. And then, and then you make your detailed model in you know, another layer or another file, and you reference it in, sit it on top of the slab. So yeah, that's, a, that's pretty cool. Oh, slab thickness there, look. that's what I was looking for, 150. Yeah. So, you know, that's, that can be a great way to alter the site as well. But mm -hmm. it's, it's just so nice because if I move it to a different position and I click update, it does all the hard work of the modeling, the contouring. So on here, you've actually got this BB plant tool. And these are quite nice. So with these, you get a bunch of different ones. Um, okay, well, that's a good chance to use, um, let's have a look. So use some sort of five meter maples. And what what's good about these is, look, the site, to be honest, is a bit small, isn't it? But just about going to do it. They're quite nice quality. Mm -hmm. And what you can do is you can use the wand tool to select them. And, right. watch, and watch this. You can, you can send things to surface. So basically, you can do this with anything. If you do send to surface, what it does, it raises it up to meet where it should sort of hits the site model. Okay. And can you adjust, and you can adjust the height of the trees, right? Yeah, the trees are adjustable, so you've got different sort of sizes and stuff like that. Okay. And some different seasons. All right.
pretty cool. Uh -huh. Let's go for a winter one. Oh, you, do you have winter trees? Probably not. No. no. <laughs> you don't lose the leaves in the winter, so you're all right. Evergreen. They can have an autumn one. No, you don't need that, probably. Well, we, well, we have two seasons, dry and, and wet season. Fair enough. So, so this is through my the, the ones we get in like in, <laughs> in, in the autumn they're drying up, you know. I'm with you. Yeah. Let me just move that back to that. Okay, so yeah, those those trees are pretty good, um, in that they are proper little three D trees and they, they kind of look nice, you know, when you're spinning around and so on. Mm -hmm. my, my tip after you've kind of exhausted the amount of trees here because there's not that many um, you definitely want to start looking at maybe uh, twin motion as this other bit of software now you've seen this one this is my new new one that I just did oh, it was. yeah do you know this one what's, no. re what's really cool is this is a 360 video so I can generate that in twin motion. Look at the quality of the planting and the trees. It's pretty awesome. Um, and things like the water. So, you know, you want to kind of do what VetDoits is strong at is the modeling and the rendering and the, and, and the BIM. When you come to do things like animation, to be fair, twin motion is very, very good. And it's free software at the moment. So, so, so that's what you really want to do to take it, you know, take it to the next level. Once you develop VetDoits model, you can export it as uh, Cinema 4D is the file format I use, and then yeah. that, that will drop straight into Twinmotion. Right. Give it a go.